We have this breaking news for you now. New York Republican Congressman George Santos has pleaded not guilty to federal charges and was just released on a $500,000 bond. Santos faced a judge this afternoon. Prosecutors filed charges in the Eastern District of New York. They include fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and making false statements. Santos is at the center of several federal investigations regarding his finances. He's also faced heavy criticism for lying about his resume leading up to his election. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins us once again here in Studio 57 to discuss the development. Scott, good to have you with us. Tell us what happened in court today. He pleaded not guilty and was released on bond, this half a million dollar bond. And his attorney told the court that he's working on securing some people to put forward that bond to release George Santos, who is now free to leave central Islip, New York, Go back to Washington. The House is in session, and the House may need his vote tomorrow to pass a controversial border security bill. This 13-charge indictment alleges fraud, wire fraud. They are accusing George Santos, this sitting member of Congress, of ripping off his donors and ripping off taxpayers, of using money he generated for his political campaign for personal expenses, and of taking and accepting and seeking Unemployment benefits, which are funded by taxpayers, even though he was employed. That's a component of what's alleged here. But George Santos is now in the federal criminal justice system, which means he's been fingerprinted. He's had a booking photo taken. I don't expect it to be released. The federal government rarely releases its booking photos. But moreover, Errol and Lana, he's now in a timetable that is measured by months and years. When you are being charged by the feds for a crime, it takes a while. It takes a couple of years. This is going to take a while to play out for the congressman. There had been calls for him to step down already for the mistruths, the lies that, um, you know, preceded his election, uh, frankly. Now that he's pleading not guilty to these charges of lying about money, um, how is his camp responding, his team, the folks who work for him? We expect him to say something um, as he returns to Washington from this very notorious episode in his life being charged and fingerprinted by the feds. His colleagues have been saying quite a bit already. They've been calling for his resignation before he even took office. Mm -hmm. After all the reporting surfaced about alleged lies about his past and about problems with his campaign finance paperwork, which, by the way, is part of this indictment. They're alleging illegalities with his campaign finance paperwork. But those calls are coming from the same camp from which they originated. It's Democrats and it's New York State Republicans, mm -hmm. those who serve in adjacent congressional districts. Right now, eager to be appointed if the seat is open, perhaps. And ultimately, they may have the, their own preferred office holder in that part of New York. Um, so yeah, th that's certainly part of it. The Republican Speaker of the House has said, let's let this case play out all the way to the end. Let's see if he's convicted of a crime. Let's see if he pleads guilty to a crime, innocent till proven guilty, which actually serves the political interests of the Speaker of the House because George Santos's case is going to go long past his term, and that would make his vote available, not just this week, but through 2024. So, Scott, I want to ask you a follow-up question about that. He's been released on bail, this, five, this half a million dollar bond. Are there any limitations, potentially, on his ability to travel back and forth to Washington, D.C., to be there for Speaker McCarthy when he needs his vote? You better believe it. They're going to limit his travel to the Eastern District of New York, Queens, Long Island, Brooklyn, and Washington, D.C. You're going to be limited to where you live and where you work. So if he wants to go somewhere else, if he wants to go to a football game in Michigan or he wants to go to a house party in Florida, he'll have to go through the court to get formal permission and put it on the court docket if he wants to travel outside those two areas. But so. he will be allowed to go to Washington and he will be allowed to continue to sit in Congress and, and be present and, and vote. Yes, if they're going to release you, um, from pretrial detention, if you're a nonviolently accused defendant, you're going to be released. And ultimately, they're going to let you go to work. So federal criminal defendants are given permission to go to their place of work and their place of residence, but they need court permission to go anywhere else. But you know, that's not inconsequential for a congressman where you do travel on congressional delegation trips and you do have to travel to fundraise. So he'll be somewhat limited there, but he'll be able to continue in his job, which is of importance not just to him, but to many other people across America who want his vote. Just a remarkable turn of events. Scott McFarlane, great to have you here walking us through it all. Appreciate Thanks, it. Scott. Of course.